it's all your basketball <laughs> right now so. it's that and x-men <laughs> like <laughs> jock jams and x-men that's what you got in your head right now honestly all the time Welcome to Casual FC, an Angel City preview pod. I'm your host, Mario Salazar, with my co-host, Angela Morales. Hello. Who's also been stuck in, like, March Madness mode. So, you know, <laughs> if if she strays from talking about soccer to talking about baseball, at, uh, baseball basketball at Base- some point. Okay, listen, I'm also watching baseball. <laughs> A lot is happening in my sports brain at if, the moment. If other sports start creeping in, <laughs> you have you you know why. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. It's a, welcome. It's everybody. my favorite time of the year. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome everybody. Uh, so right off the bat, and just to keep you up to date, our episode is going to be covering our next match, which is Saturday, March thirtieth, against the Kansas City Current. We will be at CPKC Stadium. In Kansas City, Missouri, not Kansas. They're just on the other side of the river. It is what it is. It's going to be at 12.30 p.m. It's going to be broadcasting and streaming on ESPN because they said any match that is on ESPN will also be broadcast on ESPN+. Plus. So you don't Woo. need, if you don't have a cable subscription for ESPN, you can still watch it on ESPN+. Plus. You're all good there. And if you can't watch it, it will be on iHeartRadio. So listen to Isaac and Tracy. Call the game. Amazing. And if you can't make it to Kansas City, Missouri. (laughs) (laughs) Because they did not give us a lot of supporter tickets or a lot of away folks. Because they didn't build enough seats in that stadium. Yeah. Yeah. You knew the demand was there. Why didn't you just build it for... (sighs) If you build it, if you they will come. It, they will come. <laughs> uh, Angel City will be having a watch party on the 30th. Watch party starts at 11.30 a.m. Kickoff will be at 12.30 p.m. The location will be at both 33 Taps in Culver City and in Silver Lake. So go have fun with people. Meet new people. Talk to new yeah. people. They're all going to have the same interest. not be there. I need some downtime. <laughs> I'm burning my candle at both ends and a few places in the middle and your girl needs some sleep (laughs) and just general rest. Baseball, March Madness, and the availability of the NWSL on pretty much every platform that she has (laughs) completely burnt out. (laughs) That along with like normal life responsibilities Like, a bunch of personal stuff. And I'm just like, I need three days off from life. Not even just work. Work. Life. I just need to send (laughs) into the clouds and float for three days and be like, okay, I'm fine. (laughs) But it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. Well, I I probably won't be making it either. It's just one of those things when you've got two young children that are involved in other activities And things like that, you just got to go do. Plus, LAUSD is on spring break right now. So (laughs) this week is me time shifting, going to work super early just so that I can head home from work at some time in the like early afternoon just to be able to come home and help and stuff um, and try to save the kids from boredom. (laughs) Because no matter what we do, they're bored. Yeah, that's my week. Yeah. Speaking of chaos. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of chaos, we have our week two chaos award. So if you missed it last week, we are going to be giving a chaos award to the team, player, fan base, weather, anything that creates the most shenanigans of the week. I have two nominees for this week. 
Okay. Maybe we should put up like who wins chaos and maybe do a little poll poll. based on this one on Wednesday. So if you watch the game on Friday, like the woman, the myth, the legend, Marta (laughs) bonkers on Friday. She was so frustrated by her own team when they got the goal called back by us, just by like the referees, just everything. Just everything was was frustrating her. So many things. I appreciated the fact that we had frustrated her that much, but. Oh, to the point where she was slammed. She She was was smacking the ground. She was punching the ground. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of somebody who's done that, but on a basketball court, it hurts. (laughs) But I had to do it to distract the rest of my brain from a very severe injury. So that's different. But Marta is my first nominee because that game was bonkers. She got carded way too late. Probably should have gotten carded the first time. (laughs) But yeah, the other award nominee who I wish we could just ban from the game are knees. Just, just yeah, just knees. Just, just a- knees. ACL, ACLs are part of those, but ACL, knees. PCL, MCL, LCL, cartilage, patellas, patella tendons. None of this. I'm dead. Hey, and your your physio showing. <laughs> yeah, you know, here's all these letters <laughs> for different things that hold your knee together, but we have. MA's injury, which we haven't really gotten too much news on yet. Yes. We're hoping she's good. All good thoughts to MA. Yes. Midge Purse as well went down. It's causing a little bit of a scandal because of what Juan Carlos from Gotham is saying. Oh, this is because of the Gold Cup, not because he didn't, not like he, he let her play. It's that's all thing. It's all their conversation for Gotham fans because I'm letting them take that one off. <laughs> but again, Midge is amazing. Midge does not deserve an injury. Um, and then on the like opposite end of that, this week... On recovering knees. Yeah, on recovering knees, we get Kristen Press posting training videos, doing a little footwork, a little steppy steps, running. Yeah. Excuse me? I don't know. Just the these... Way- the way <laughs> the way social media works is like that what you post is not exactly what's going on at the moment but i'm wondering was she just solo training while everybody was like traveling she's just Probably. by herself at the training center oh my time nobody will bug me yeah and then if you know anything about woso fans and chris and press and tobin heath fans i have learned they went absolutely feral one, just because she posted. Two, because she posted playing. And then three, because there was a picture of Tobin. It's a whole thing. I just hope she's doing okay. I don't know what it means. Yes, I'm, I can't I... look too much into it because there's too much that is impacted by the possibility of her coming back this season. Yes. Yeah. We there's... talked about it a little bit in previous episodes. There's not room yeah. on the roster right there's... now, so... Who knows? Yeah. No room, which means someone has to, someone's got to go. Um, yeah. And which is. It's stressful. And then, like, even she's training, does it mean that she's going to be at 100% if she comes back in the summer? Everybody was hoping for a summer comeback from her. But, again, whenever she comes back, she's not going to be at 100%. So, yeah. I do wish her all the best i'm glad to see that she's up and training like she's geared up and ready to go and i really do hope that all her training is like making her stronger and getting her ready to play and i would Mm -hmm. love to see her play again because those first couple games were great i just want to be like everybody just put your reality hat on yeah and look at the actual situation I'm, not the the aura of <laughs> Kristen Press, yeah. right? And I'm sorry for everybody who's listening <laughs> that is a Kristen Press fan that like is like, what the f are you talking about? <laughs> Believe me, I'm with you. I want her to be on that pitch as much as you do. Yep. I also just want to like temper. I'd rather sh- set my expectations in a kind of low realistic type thing, mm-hmm. and then just be blown away. So. And I think at this point we have to. We just lost Sam Mewis to retirement at 31 because of the damage that was done to her knee. And she was never able to get back to the point of playing again. The only thing I want is for her to be happy and secure in whatever decision she makes. 
but we also have to be realistic as fans that to have what four surgeries now it's yeah. a little iffy yeah realistically it just as a human you can only go through so much but yeah. enough for cp right now she'd probably be like please stop talking about me yeah like back back to the rest of the league what happened this weekend so our quick roundabout for the nw cell we had the Utah Royals taking on North Carolina Courage. The Royals won two to one. The Red Stars won two to one against Seattle, which going into the bonkers. season, everybody was like, Seattle. Yeah, bonkers. Like, Red Stars, what, finished like almost dead last, or they did finish dead last year. So, yeah, this team, both the Utah game, the Utah North Carolina game was insane. There was like PKs that were saved. It was a whole thing. Yeah. The Red Stars are shooting the lights out, frankly. In a way, I knew they were going to come back strong this season, given the sale of the team, the coaching change, Mal coming back. Alyssa Nair, though, Alyssa Nair is in peak form. (laughs) Uncle Alyssa is what's up. But anyway, go ahead. And then we've got Washington Spirit 2-1 to over Bay FC. I'm not going to lie. I was so happy they lost. <laughs> right. The rivalry runs deep already. Yeah, it it's deep enough where we're just going to have that little bit of satisfaction every time they lose. We want to see amazing things from some of their players, but we also want to see them lose every single time. So <laughs> that's all good. Yep. Houston and Racing both came to a 0-0 draw. San Diego and Kansas City won 2-1. to one. And then we've got Portland and Gotham won one to zero. Lots of spicy soccer this weekend. Exactly. A lot of it. Exactly. And then that brings us to our match. So on the last episode of Angel City FC, we took on the Orlando Pride at Inner and Co Stadium on Friday, the 22nd. Yes. (laughs) We were the first first match of the weekend. (laughs) Yes. Which is always a good thing. Also always a bad thing because it's stressful. We came out with a draw, which honestly, we got lucky. They had a goal called back. Thank God. We got a penalty. And then we set Marta up for the most beautiful freaking goal in the whole wide world. And Embley took the penalty at, at 53 minutes. And then Marta was wide open. Nobody on her on a corner kick and she just karate kick. She like jumped up. It was and, dunk. Yeah. Just... Karate kick that thing in. And I'm just like, <laughs> Oh man. Yeah. That is that's highlight of, reel, like, but uh, it hurts. It hurts so bad. Yeah. I joked. I think I said it in the preview where I was like, I love when Marta plays well. I hate it when it's against my team. Prime example. Exactly. The thing is that angel city matched up exactly how they were they had planned on it they did everything they were supposed to do and wanted to do for that corner kick marta just doesn't count like, yeah yeah although Mar- matthias was just like yeah we did what you're we supposed to do and then there's marta like yeah. there's only so much you can do marta was doing a lot for that team though <laughs> honestly if marta goes she down can, yeah that, i know we were saying brazil 2.0 but if and they were some glimpses of that yeah but if marta goes down um, it is honestly that we would have won five and one. <laughs> like if Marta <laughs> was not in that, like she was doing so much. She was dropping back so far into the defense. Yeah. To make up for what her defense wasn't doing. <laughs> Marta was everywhere. Just like Messiah was. If you watch the game, Messiah was everywhere. It was very apparent that she was playing against her old club and she had a point to prove. Just because I left doesn't mean anything changed. I am who I am. But overall, we looked good. And that's the hard part right now with the little tweaks that you see happening. Our pace is good. Our control is decent. Everything is almost there. Yeah. When you look, we looked good, I think. When we look at the stats, possession was pretty much 50 50. The thing is, it's one of those, what's the the Wayne Gretzky, Michael Scott quote? I don't you, know. I've never watched The Office. Mario is quickly finding <laughs> out how much pop culture I have sacrificed to watch sports. <laughs> yes. She is watching the 90s X-Men animated series right now for the first time. And I'm just like, really? Really? Come on now. Really? Yeah. Saturday morning cartoons. I half the time couldn't watch them because I was at a tournament, a game, 
practice something. Those weren't Saturday yeah. morning cartoons. Those were like midweek after school cartoons. Also at practice <laughs> games. <laughs> <laughs> I played six sports. Uh, the quote is, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. Wayne Gretzky, Michael Scott. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So the shots on target. It's also a quote eight. from a Cinderella story for <laughs> what it's worth. <laughs> 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 um, yeah from the paint peels in the diner yeah i, I like the offering <laughs> better <laughs> okay uh so yeah where i was going with that was the fact that total shots overall orlando had us beat 14 to 12 but the crucial one is the shots on target they had eight eight mm-hmm. on target and we only had four and it's come on like you need to shoot like when the score is zero and then you look at the stats and it says zero shots on target there was a reason why the score was zero if and you... that's the thing we have to capitalize on the chances we have because we're making them like those chances are being created yes it's we had, just according to fat mob we had three big chances and basically we missed all of those so yeah and if you want me to define what big chances are, don't ask me because I like. Uh, <laughs> call Nina. Go over to call. Angel City Chicks. Hit ask, up Nina. <laughs> go, hey Nina. We heard it on on Casual FC. What are big chances? <laughs> Nina, come help us. I'm gonna text her right now to tell her like, hey. <laughs> yeah, this is the second episode. We're like, can you just phone in? But overall, I think everybody had the same feelings. We posted up the how Share you your feeling feelings. therapy yeah. session after the game. And generally, everybody felt the same way. Katie said she was overly or overall hopeful and that Allie Riley's post game was spot on with the fingers crossed emoji. So I didn't see Cap's post game stuff. So I'll have to go look at that to see what that was all about. I saw merits and coaches, but I didn't see Cap's. I, I think Allie's was something about like they, they just have to step up on the on these big moments mm. and like they have to take advantage of the moment and the opportunity when it comes to them and that's just something that they need to work on yeah i absolutely i think that's what it was if not then (laughs) that's what i'm gonna say it was because they (laughs) definitely need to do that either way yeah then ethan messaged us and said that he was a bit underwhelmed to be honest and that we need to execute on the chances which is what we were just saying and to crowd the box so for those who don't know the box by the goal you want people there to then have more feet to kick the ball into the goal. Yeah. People in a small area mm-hmm. creates chaos and that chaos yes. can lead to a goal. So Exactly. Uh, KL asked where TF <laughs> is lay beyond, which honestly, same. I have so many questions. Clarice, <laughs> where are you? <laughs> I was going to make a very poorly timed joke prior to the recording of this episode. I took it out of my brain because it would have been very inappropriate given worldwide events that are happening. Um, But I feel like our second Frenchie is missing and the vibe on the pitch. Like sometimes I'm like, we just need a little something. (laughs) And I honestly, I think it's Clarice because she's such a playmaker yeah. So I agree with KL and wondering, what the heck? Max messaged us and said that the positives were that the team still looked good and played with a lot of heart. And once the goals start, they'll be hard to stop, which I completely agree with. I think that penalty that Claire took is going to take a little bit of that pressure off. Yeah. We scored. We pulled that Band-Aid off. We're good. Max also said that the Sol Rosa looks great, which I agree on, and that the Prime broadcast was really well done. Yeah, I was prim- at Rock and Bruce, so I only heard half of it. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, like I said, the Prime broadcast was pretty great. Quality was great. I didn't really have any streaming issues, so it was all good on my end. And yes, the Soul Rosa kits looked great. It wasn't until like halfway in the first that I realized that both teams were wearing their away kits. Orlando also had their <laughs> away kit. And the way you can tell is that every away kit has the gradient. Like, yeah, ombre look to the, it. like 45 degree ombre gradient thing. And then I was like, oh, it's because we're playing in a Sol Rosa pink and theirs is like this kind of orange Julius. It's like a coral. Yeah. 
it's like the orange Julius kit, <laughs> like a coral pinkish. So both of them would have been light colored things. So you, yeah, so makes sense. And then Katie also came, another Katie with a Y came in with, so next game is going to be a win, right? Because we're just trending upwards. <laughs> Basically, we started with a loss. We're Please. at a tie. Okay. Next one's going to be a win, right? We just want to, we want to round out. <laughs> on the table we want to have a one 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 yes basically. i just gave me some straight lines exactly on that let's check out the standings point on the road is huge for anyone right short week cross-country opponent the fact yeah. that we got a point was big we're still in 11th place it is what it is again that's only game to Let's when we're a little bit more in the middle of the season, if we're still in 11th place, then let's start talking. We're fine right now. Like Katie said, next one's going to be a win. So, Mm -hmm. but looking at the standings, it's been a surprising start for Portland. They're at the bottom with two losses. Yup. I literally, before we were recording, I was talking to Eva and she brought this up. We've been talking about it all weekend. They, their midfield is in it's in shambles. shambles yeah they traded emily menges and i feel like they regret that trade i yeah. don't know and they still have becky sauerbrunn you have captain america on your team <laughs> i don't know i have so many questions for the thorns for quite a few reasons but they have def- they had a pretty cool tifo though did you see it it was like oh the yeah dune, the dune their, one their dune yeah. tifo that's pretty cool. The other interesting thing is, again, we talked about it. We talked about it earlier was seeing the Red Stars and KC on top. Yeah, Red Stars in, are in first place, Kansas City in second. It's Give it a couple wild. more games, but it's still if it's still roughly like this, like we're in a whole. This new season's world, gonna be insane. I every NWSL season is, but league man, <laughs> what the heck? It gives us the excitement we want. <laughs> But just remember, this is game two. There are tons of season left to play. Anything can happen. They're going to keep things interesting for us. Which brings us to our preview of our next opponent. The meat and potatoes of this podcast (laughs) is the Angel City FC at Kansas City Current. What are we looking for? Yeah. A lot. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Kansas City has already proven themselves to be a prolific scoring team just in these first two games. They've put up, what, seven goals so far? Yeah, seven. Jeez. Over two games. Yeah, Mario is currently hand, <laughs> head in hand, like rubbing, rubbing the his temples. Face. Just, oh my God. Yeah, same. This is, I think, going to be a true test for us to see, one, if we can really lock in offensively because we're going to need to in general we have to get po- we have to get the ball in the net in order to do anything to make this game great or not painful one of the two honestly yeah, yeah. um this team is so different this season Kansas City is insane they're whomping on people and it's the scoreline for this last game was closer obviously and Portland was able to come back in that first game a little bit, but they are aggressively offensive. Yeah, they're pushing. The f- they're they're way yeah. up there. They're just they're and looking that's the to thing, school isn't? in the jump. Exactly. Yeah, they're different. They're different they're just, season. Get your opponent on the back heel, like just get them a little dizzy, a little mixed up, and that like, gives you just that advantage for the rest of the match. I think I did the see way the same they're thing you did. Oh, go! Oh, the next, my next point. Yeah. Or yeah. No, go ahead. The one thing I was gonna say that I just thought of right now is that the way they play is the way we anticipated Bay FC to play. This very forward, very aggressive, very like score mindset is how we anticipated Bay FC. So if we're thinking that, I think we're gonna be okay overall. Um, A curious thing, which I'm very curious to see how this plays out this weekend. But Vlatko has told the team to be humble, calm down your celebrations, blah, blah, blah. There is some outrage from U.S. national team fans because, no, you do not make soccer or fish sallies. Lola Bonta 
has the most iconic queen of Sally's, and I, yeah. queen of Sally's, I hate that it's against us obviously like the iconic like pulled hammy into a twerk Ugh. it was so good so just so good but honestly i think telling your team to be humble after you suffer is stupid i'm just like why That's... are you doing that no let them have and, person no, let don't... them enjoy the game there's a lot of pressure on women's sports to be proper and gentle and kind yeah, and don't... i think it's trash yeah don't give us this like proper bs like no. you're a professional player no you... that... everyone has the permission the right the you were born with it maybe it's yeah. maybelline you <laughs> celebrate whichever which way you want except taking off your shirt because that's a card but and i do Brandy it chastain did it want. so who cares <laughs> yeah calm down i mean <laughs> if you get if you get one this early in the season okay but celebrate <laughs> make it a thing the thing is in a league like this too that's it's here there's there's no denying that the nwsl is here right but there's also and both can be true it's also growing right mm. you're still growing the sport the way you're gonna keep growing it in this day and age is the instagramable content it's the tiktok yeah. content it's the it's the little 15 second clip that is makes exactly. somebody go oh i want to see that again as much as i it makes me so Lola sad Bonta's forever twerk. it's so good it went it, football it went into basketball it exactly like, i wish like this is one of those i wish we had videos because i'm just like Ugh, with my hands right now <laughs> the I have big issues around the policing of joy, especially in women's sports, because that conversation is happening right now in women's basketball, both at collegiate and professional levels. Let them be aggressive. Let them be upset. Let them be so freaking happy that they're going to the Sweet 16. Not, not to the point where it's a detriment to the team or to players or whatever, but we have emotions too. Guys yeah. have been doing this for generations. Calm down. Nobody cares. But a woman runs around and pretends to pull her hamstring and then twerks because she just scored, scored a freaking banger of a goal. Yeah. And is cracking up while she's doing it because her whole team bought it, bought that she was hurt. Like, yeah. no, no, he's, he, he has the wrong take on that. And she even said, when we're at home, things might be a little bit different. Yeah. And you know what? <laughs> Do the damn thing. Yeah. But I will ask, okay, if you're going to tone it down during against us, then okay. That's fine. Because <laughs> don't hurt my feelings. <laughs> that part, please, Lola Bonta, don't hurt my feelings. In general, just please don't. <laughs> Unless um, it becomes another that, iconic one. You can't be mad at it. Please just wait till next week. Just, <laughs> just wait till your next matchup. But yes, I agree. Telling them to yeah. calm down or be humble is like the dumbest thing ever. Like, you tell a woman to calm down. That's that's the only... Ugh. It makes me so angry. I bet you he never told it straight to them, too. It was like more of a... He said it to a reporter like on the side and be like, don't tell them. Don't say I said it. This is off the record, right? You heard this from someone. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> from that i just need i need to know how my girl ma is doing yes mostly because i just hope she's okay as soon as ma was on the ground both of us started texting each other oh my god what's going on what's happening she's limping off the field yeah this looks bad I... hopefully it's not bad please don't i'm let really grateful for the length of this season and the olympic break is all i'm saying Yes. Yeah. That's it. I'm grateful for the length so that she has time to heal and that there's the possibility still. I will hope amongst hopes and wish on every star. There's a full moon. If you believe in mm -hmm. astrology and stuff, do some things for MA, like whatever it is, throw some up for our girl. I know her family is probably stressed. Yeah. So, Yeah. I just want some news. Hopefully it's good news. Like, yes. let's just get like a funky weird injury and then she's got to take a few weeks off. 
maybe even like a month or two, but that's okay. A month or two means May. Birthday present for me, even if it's yeah. belated. Birthday mm-hmm. present for you. Cool. Birthday present for Jackie from Women Kick Balls. For my yeah. mom. We've got all kinds of we days. Got birthdays. Uh, <laughs> okay. Hey, please let us know. Angel City, let us know. We just want to know that she's okay. And yeah. We're hoping. Yeah. We're sending, we're going to be dipping a little bit in that good luck. <laughs> the good luck fund. In the good luck fund yeah. and sending it just directly to MA and be like, you need a little bit of this. Hopefully it helps. So, yeah. All right. Yeah, players absolutely. to watch. Kansas City. <sighs> okay. I've already talked about Lil Levanta. I'm going to just start off with her. She's in the midfield. She's from Rancho Cucamonga, so she's got California vibes, which makes so much sense personality-wise. So good at scoring, dispossessing in the midfield, just like being up there and be like, no, this is my my ball now, running away. Um, just overall being great. Like I said, her sellies are perfect. As good of a player as she is, she's a even better leader in the community. She has really stepped up to be the face of the team in Kansas City, She did the voiceover for the NWSL commercials. Her face is all over the streetcars in Kansas City. She's just like, I'm so happy for her that she's getting the recognition in the city. Aside from the recognition that we all know, she's freaking great. (laughs) So that's Lola Bonta. She is number 10 in the midfield. Um, Then the next person I want to talk about is Bia Zanaretto. She is a forward. If you watched the game the first week against Portland, she came out of nowhere to score. Um, A few different reporters I follow that follow different teams were like, you guys got to watch out for her. She's sneaky good. She's just in the right place at the right time. Guess what country she plays for? (laughs) Brazil. Surprising she doesn't only go by one name, but it's because her first name is a little short one. I, you so, know what? Give it a year and she might be like, yeah, just going to go by Bia now. Right. She's appeared. I honestly thought she was like 22. She's appeared in four Women's World Cups and two Olympics. I was really confused when I looked that up. So I was <laughs> like, you're almost my age. What? This is confusing. She is number nine and just so good. She, like I said, she finds the ball. She finds where she needs to be to get the, the connection to the pass. All of that. Yet another person we need to look out for defensively. And then the scream I scrumped (laughs) during the first week of the NWSL watching this Kansas City game when Temwa Chawinga came in. So she is the captain of the Malawi national team. Like I said, we're getting into... African soccer again. I'm going to cry about it. I'm going to scream about it because it's insane. I have, I was a track and field athlete. I understand how speed works, how people run, what makes you go faster, all that. I was a thrower, but now I'm a speed coach. It's a whole thing. I've never seen someone mid stride change their speed. They, she changed her gait. Her stride got longer and she just ate up the field. In the mid- Someone was like, holding the X button. That's why <laughs> you just you hold the X button on the controller and they go faster. Yeah, that's honestly that's what it looked like. I like I made Eva run back into her living. I was like, "Come here right now! You have to see her play. She's so quick. She's so smart. You can see her soccer IQ. You know how in different movies and stuff you have like, the radar in the robots." I swear to you, that's how her brain happened. Or that like math meme where you like someone just yeah. like, with, like, calculations going all over their Yes. Head. Yes, absolutely. She is shockingly good. Within the first 10 minutes of her coming into that game, she completely changed the speed of the game. The, the vibe was different. She assisted on two goals, I think. One or two. She's dangerous. And I'm excited to watch her play, but I hate that it's against us. (laughs) All three of these women, honestly, I could watch them play forever, but just not against my team. (laughs) All right. So just to recap for you, we've got (laughs) number six. I'm going to let you say it again, just real quick for me. It's either Temwa or Timwa. I'm not sure, but her last name is Chewinga. Okay. So number six, Chewinga. We've got number nine, Bia Zanaretto. 
and number 10, Lola Bonta. They're all going to be big threats. They're all going to be playmakers. Mm -hmm. They're all going to be people to really keep your eye on. And if one or two of them are just not in the starting, then... (laughs) But also, I don't want them to sub in. Yeah, because that just means fresh legs. Yeah, because that first game, Chawinga came in and subbed in, and I was like, oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, for our angels, Q Charlie's Angels reference number 9,000. Our three that I want to cover today are, shockingly, all defense, because we're going to need it. (laughs) Guessing the MA is going to be out, just given how much pain she was in. Yeah. her The sub that came in for MA was Merritt Mathias. Making her second, yeah, appearance of the season, and not and in being out the all later of last game. season. She had a rough off season. I mentioned it before. She was recovering from a knee injury that took longer to to rehab than anticipated. Her dog passed away, and she was also diagnosed with diabetes, which slows down your healing, slows down a lot of the things your body is supposed to do naturally. There's a million different reasons why diabetes happens and to see that in such a high caliber athlete super sucks because it's i wonder now if she's granted she's probably going to process this over the last year or so but it's that oh is this why this happened or oh is this why i couldn't heal well enough the first time or you get in your head about all those different things so i'm so happy that she's back on the pitch her play style seems to have changed from when she was at north carolina which I'm I'm down with. She wasn't my favorite player on North Carolina. Wasn't for me. But she's the intensity and the intent of her play hasn't changed. That's still the meat is still there. Yeah. But there's a different level of I think maturity, honestly. And if you want some NWSL lore, there is an infamous Merritt Matthias tweet <laughs> that she posted after her ACL she had an ACL injury a few years back and the gist is that I did not tear ACL was torn for me it's a whole very dramatic thing I completely understand it but it's also very funny I'll send it to you later okay okay (laughs) but number 12 Merritt Mathias I'm happy she's back on the pitch I hope she has a great game she's most I'm assuming she's gonna get the start I would think so with our back line for the way she came in to to take over MA. She played fantastic and yeah. she was she held up that speed and level intense a level of intensity for the whole game. So I wouldn't be surprised if she started. My next person is the one, the only Paige Nielsen. I love Paige. I love defense. We all know this. <laughs> I super love Paige for a million reasons. Um, she was my second kit. All of my kits are defenders. Yeah, we, yeah. Nobody's surprised. (laughs) (laughs) The interesting thing for me is I think Paige is having what some people is considering a breakout season, but I'm like, this is just Paige Nielsen. Yeah. If you've been paying attention for longer than two years, this is Paige being Paige. And I think a lot of people forget in that first season of Angel City, she was recovering from almost dying. And a blood clot where she had to have a rib removed, a whole yeah. thing. This is Paige at the top of her game again. This, yeah. this is how she was playing back east on other teams in other countries. Oh, she, she is so solid. She is a brick wall. She had an amazing save during that Orlando match where if it wasn't for her, that was a goal. Absolutely. Like, it unfortunately Absolutely. passed past Angelina and but she, Paige was there to knock and it was hairy because it was like she the only thing she could do was slide and kick it up and it is just if she kicked it up a little bit more it would have gone like into the net yep it she came in there with the perfect trajectory and got that thing out yeah she is so like during the game we're sitting at rock and brews eva turns to me and my mom and she goes are you willing to bestow her your nickname and i started laughing so hard because in high school when I was playing basketball, my teammates called me the wall because of the screens I would set. Like, uh. you could not get by me. 
I set a screen on the baseline. Good luck to that poor sweet little guard who's about to run into me, who's five <laughs> feet tall. The amount of people that ended up on the ground because they ran into me was more than 10. It was a lot. <laughs> and it was the kind of thing we set up the play so that the first screen was me. Yeah. And then I got my guard free, which is what you want to do. But Paige is a brick wall for our defense. She, I talk up Sarah Gordon. Paige is right there for different reasons. They are so good together, and having them as our center backs is just so comforting in my brain. It's just different, and I feel like in learning, because she found out that people were saying that they didn't know she was actually this good, (laughs) and she posted it. I think she posted it on Instagram. I've been playing for a lot. Like, this isn't new. Yeah. This is just who I am, and I think a lot of the drive to excel this season was that of oh you didn't know my name oh you don't know who i am okay i'll make sure i'm here for it let's f and go and not yeah. soccer related but she has two really amazing dogs too real cute yeah, like looking at her instagram <laughs> with, the, with the dogs but she is a beast on our defense and i love it and like just getting to hear from her when she during her podcast hopefully it continues or something but but knowing that we've got her on our back line, that's one of the reasons why the Orlando game was so close was because yeah. of our back line held it down. So it's, yeah. we're not worried about our back line. No. In, in, in previous years, there's been a little bit of worry because like one side might be lacking the other side. Like it wasn't right now we've got a solid wall back there. So. Yeah. I and think... even our, our subs, like they're super subs. They're not just, okay, MA went down in the first half and Merrick came off the bench and I was like, that's fine. Because that MA is hurt. I'm not upset with the sub who came in. It's not one of the, it's not a consolation prize. It's, oh, sweet. She actually is going to get minutes. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. This is great. We need reps. And then last, but certainly not least, is Amandine Mandy Henri. She's only called Mandy here in the states nobody else calls her that she's that's my american name <laughs> but she is our she probably midfield. hates how everybody like butchers amandine oh absolutely absolutely yeah the <laughs> the commentators that when i did hear them were mispronouncing things all over the place during the game on friday and i'm like there's pronunciation guides that the teams give you yeah. please use them if you're calling international sports you need to know how to pronounce people's names but i digress mandy is great she when we picked her up last season i was super excited because she's so solid as a midfielder she locks it down like our midfield has just it is different this season i don't know if anybody else has noticed we're solid in our midfield and again our midfield subs it's fine. It's just, it's another starting lineup for most teams. And that's honestly at this level is what it should be. But Mandy also knows how to win. She's an offensively minded midfielder who obviously plays defense, but she's not afraid to score. I'm hoping she gets a header in sometime soon. She won a championship in 2017 with Portland. She's a French national team player. She played for Lyon. She she has a storied career, and we're lucky that she came back to the NWSL. It was one of those where it's, I'll never play here again. Wow. But given that she was playing for Portland in 2016, 2017, I get it. Because that's when everything there went down. There was reasons, yes. I wouldn't want to come back to this league at that time either, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> I think there had to have been a lot of a lot of personal healing done for her. And the league had to do a lot in order. And a lot of players are starting to come back, which is really great. But overall, those are my angels. That's mm-hmm. who I think we should pay attention to. So in the back there, defending against all of those forwards and mid- midfielders <laughs> that we talked about <laughs> on KC, we've got Merritt at number 12. We've got Paige, number 14. And then Amandine, we've got at number 26. And our history with Kansas City has been three wins and one draw and zero losses. So we've Knock on wood, that zero stays a zero. Yes, we have not lost. I'll take a draw. I'll take I a draw, but it. we're we're supposed to be on an upward trend here. So let's get that fourth <laughs> win against Kansas. Yes. 
But yeah, fourth win, three points. I'm so down. Let's make up a goal differential. Let's be the fun party spoilers and spoil their make give them their first loss in their new stadium. Everybody needs the band aid pulled off. So <laughs> let's be the ones to do it. Let's crash this party. But no, I'm very excited for this game. I think it's going to be a very intense matchup, but we'll see. I, I'll be with Eva and I'll probably piss off her neighbors, but <laughs> oh, because they're not the best. <laughs> Yes, just a reminder on where to watch and listen. The game is going to be Saturday, March 30th. It's being played at Kansas City at CPK Stadium in Kansas City, Missouri at 12.30 p.m. It's going to be on ESPN and ESPN+. Plus. So ESPN also means like you can go to a bar and you can watch it because they're going to have mm-hmm. ESPN. Tell them to put it on. Yeah. It's 12.30. They're... I checked. They just opened. One, they've just opened. Two, basketball games are a little bit later. They've got time. They can dedicate at least one TV. Tell them to chill. Yeah. And with the sound on, please. Come on. Yes. If you if you can't watch it on TV <laughs> and you can't be there, the game will be on iHeartRadio. So go ahead and uh, listen there. Like I said, sometimes it's my preferred way to uh, listen and watch is to listen to Isaac and Tracy call the game while... <laughs> watching the game on whatever streaming service it's on there is a delay right just like radio any type of radio has a delay so there is a delay usually when i do this i take off my like watch my my apple watch and i like turn off notifications because i don't want one of the million (laughs) sports apps that i have buzzing at me saying that there was a goal like a minute before it happened so (laughs) i will give you that word of warning and there will be a watch party hosted by Angel City. It'll be the party starts at eleven thirty. Again, kickoff is going to be at twelve thirty. They will be at thirty three taps, both in Culver City and in Silver Lake. But it's March Madness, and Angela is going to be <laughs> like in a crazy whirlwind of, <laughs> of sports this weekend. Yep. It's, yeah, I put a note. Yeah, read that note that I put in there for you to read. (laughs) Yeah, we know it's the Sweet 16 and the Elite 8. Please take a break at some, find some time to take a break. (laughs) Rest your brain. Watch a different sport. This is really only directed to Angela at the moment. (laughs) But if you are one of these people who have (laughs) lost yourself in like over 30 hours of basketball this week alone... This weekend, like from Friday to now, (laughs) I've watched easily, let's see, I watched five games today, three yesterday. Does this count all the five? All all the stoppages in time too. Yes. Okay. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. I've easily watched close to 20 different games just of the women's tournament. So do yourself a favor and walk around. And when I re-listen to this on Wednesday, once it goes live. I'm going to, yep, this is a note to future Angela. <laughs> yeah. Future Angela, please stand up and walk around. <laughs> I know you're good at drinking your water, but. Take a break. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's what we got for you for this Angel City preview. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening this far and getting through my crazy noodle of a brain. If you like what you heard and you want to hear some more, make sure you hit the subscribe button wherever you're listening. Check out casualfc.com for all of the podcast links. The best way to support us is to share the podcast, like our posts, comment on things, episodes, leave reviews on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all those things. Engagement. It's free. It's relatively easy. We appreciate it. It means we get blasted out. Yeah, feed the algorithm, help the robot monsters, help us, basically. (laughs) If you want to be like the super cool people that I saw at Watch Party and at opening day wearing merch, you can go to shop.casualfc.com. We have a whole bunch of ideas coming up. We need to really buckle down and figure out which ones we're going to put up. But I'm super excited. I love our merch. It's so silly and it's so fun. I hope you're liking what you're hearing. And if you feel so inclined and you want to actually help support the pod monetarily, you can do something called buy us a coffee. You can check out the link in our bio and all of our social media, 
or you can go to buymeacoffee.com slash casual FC pod where you can throw us a few bucks to run this thing, grab coffee together, what have you, whatever you feel like doing, or you don't have to do that at all. That's completely up to you. We don't expect it. Nah. We don't anticipate it. I usually cry when somebody drops oh, us yeah. like five bucks. It's always a good time. <laughs> <laughs> if you aren't already, make sure you follow us on social media at Casual FC Pod on Instagram, Twitter, Threads, and TikTok. And make sure you tell a friend about the pod. We know it brings good luck to this team. So we're trying to keep that trend going through the season. Plus, we need extra this week to throw it to M.A. Yeah, M- M.A. needs a little bit more uh, luck here. So let's make sure we give her a little bit of surplus on that. Absolutely. All right, everybody. Enjoy the games this weekend. Watch a whole bunch of them. We'll see you next week. All right, bye. it's all your basketball (laughs) right now it's that and x-men like (laughs) jock jams and x-men that's what you got in your head right now honestly all the time i have the pink jock jam on loop (laughs) that specific one probably since like 1996 Yeah, the pink Jock Jam CD. I have it somewhere. Like, I still have it, for sure. (laughs) It's my favorite. Anyway, Uh, all right, let's do this. You have random (laughs) dumb shit for me (laughs) to put in the beginning. (laughs) Uh, Okay. Go for it. Bye. Bye.